keep up to date with our latest videos, please hit the subscribe button below. Hi there, welcome to this video from racingbetdata.com. Uh, again, I'm going to be introducing some of the new features and functions and improvements uh, that we've rolled out across the site. In this video, specifically looking at the data dashboard itself, which I'm going to navigate to now. Um, so this is the engine room of the site, really, and uh, allows users to, to filter selections and criteria uh, and analyze output in big chunks. Um, so from the top of the, uh, the, the screen, once it's loaded up, you'll see there's a change here, and that's the last updated. So we've just added this text in. So that will allow you immediately to look when you load up the, um, the dashboard when the last time the database was up, uploaded. So if you're looking first thing in the morning, for instance, you can quickly see if the database has been updated for the day uh, before you do any uh, searching of criteria. You've then got your details that we've covered in uh, the, the opening video about your account. Um, we've got date picker option. So quickly select date picker. Now this is a way if you wanted to recall uh, data from a race back in time, or sorry, a day back in time, you can quickly use the little calendar function here. Um, send that to Excel. I'm gonna create the Excel document here. You've got this um, new logo on the screen which shows you when it's generating an Excel output. And that's outputted to Excel. So you can see there that's the output of the full day's racing. So 386 records for the 22nd of September last year, 2021. You can send it to screen, click submit. And again, you get a little widget on the screen that shows you that's loading the data. And you can see the speed that it's uh, taken to, to load those records. Um, I'm gonna go through a bit more about the, the outputs and some of the functions on the main dashboard itself. Um, but that's, um, that's how you use the date picker option and then you can navigate back to the main filters by clicking the, uh, the link at the top there. So we're back on the main dashboard. <clears throat> um, the saver selection, like I said, that's gonna be covered in an, a separate video. So uh, if you wanted to recall, so you can save your preset criteria to recall, you can amend it, delete it. Um, you, if you wanted to build in more than one sort of set, set of criteria, you can do so, you can name it. Um, and then you can easily recall it from within here. I'm gonna do that on a separate video as well. So uh, so you can understand the, the full workings of the manager selection criteria. Um, but let's scroll through here, <coughs> here and generate some output. So let's select exclusively flat tracks. Um, we're not gonna select anything. I'm just gonna work through um, and select some random data here. We're not gonna we'll leave the jockey and trainer detail. Um, I'm going to put in a SP range of 2 to 3.5 and we're going to select Betfair odds as the criteria. Um, number of runners in race, we can filter by that. So it says a minimum of six. Uh, and you can apply any of these filters. I'm purely doing this just to get some output uh, for the video. Okay, and once you've got your criteria, I'm just going to bring this stopwatch over so you can see the speed it's going to take. So once I hit start on here, I'm going to click the submit button, which will generate our output. Um, and again, you can see the widget showing that the data is loading. I'll bring the stopwatch back to the front. And you can see there that we've generated 900 records in just over nine seconds. Um, so the speed of the site is now up to 10 times quicker. Obviously the speed will depend on your broadband connection uh, and the speed of your PC stroke laptop. You know, the one I'm using here is an i5, not the best. So you might even uh, find you get better speeds, um, but you can appreciate just how quick that is now to generate a thousand rows of output. <clears throat> so in terms of the output itself, uh, you'll notice here that there's the uh, little orange arrow button. You click on that and it will take you to the bottom of the, um, the data range and to the top of the profitability stroke uh, analysis tables. Uh, you've got another one there, which will take you to back to the top again. Um, and then let's walk through some of the additional features that we've added in here then. So what you might notice, first of all, is the BFLR um, column on the right hand side. Now, depending on your screen setup, it might be that you have to scroll a bit to the right. So depending on your resolution, but uh, if you click on the arrow there, you'll have a scroll bar appearing here. If you can't fit it all on one screen, you will have a scroll bar which you can scroll uh, horizontally 
to, to navigate to make sure you can see all the columns. Um, but yeah, there's a BLFLR column, which is the Betfair lay returns. Now all of the headings are covered in this key here. So you can see here, Betfair lay return. Now the Betfair lay return and the Betfair win return, these all include a 2% commission. So on any winning bet or trade um, or selection. So you can see here for the um, ones in black where the horse finished first, the place was won. These were backed uh, at 10 unit stake. Um, and this includes a 2% uh, commission. Now on these ones here, which are, are now red because we're laying, so basically where the horse won, uh, those are turned red and they um, they wouldn't apply the commission, but the other trades, so the where the horse didn't win, they were winning lay selections. Uh, and again, we've applied a 2% commission to the output there. If we scroll very quickly to the output tables, <clears throat> you'll see here, that we have a summary and we've added in two new columns. So that's the lay profit loss and the lay yield. So those are now included in the uh, in the table. And you can click on the Betfair SP uh, explained just to see a bit of detail. So it's basically covers what I've said. They're backed or laid to a 10 unit stake and both include the 2% commission. Uh, you can also have this broken down by favorites uh, or second favorites, third favorites, etc. But because we've only filtered on favorites already within the uh, dashboard criteria. We've only got output for favorites here on the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna navigate back to the top. Now, a couple of the other features that we've added, uh, these headers that you can see here underlined with white, these are all clickable, and that means that you can sort them. So let's click on the horse. <coughs> and this will sort the horse horses by name alphabetically. You can see as it's done there, A to Z, and then clicking it again. Uh, it will sort Z to A. Now, all of these, like I've said, are, click, uh, are clickable and sortable. So if you want to sort by date, uh, by time, it's all pretty obvious and all um, all easy to do via a click of the mouse. Um, what else we've got here then? So you can click on the horse. You can see here that these are all um, highlighted as you move up and, up and down. If we click on Zubar, you'll see that the whole horse history for Zubar has been brought up on the screen along with its profitability. So if you were backing this horse using Betfair SP, it would be long-term profitable over the 30 races, uh, laying uh, negative. You can do that on any of these horses, um, brings up the whole horse history. Um, and also there's additional data on the horse and the jockey trainer. So you click on the right-hand side, you'll see that it shows you about the, the horse trainer and the jockey. Their, uh, how many firsts they've had in their career and also in their uh, in the current year and also a bit about the horse, how long since its previous race. So that's all included uh, on the screen. You can export to Excel in the same way that we've shown you already when using the date filter uh, action. <coughs> this this is, generates a, a genuine XLSX file um, and it exports straight to your download. Um, let's navigate back to the bottom here and just to go through some of the data here. So as I said, I've explained the bet for SP. These columns will be populated if you didn't include just the the, um, the, the favorite on the dashboard. And I'm gonna uh, go through that in a bit more detail now. Um, what we're gonna show you is how you can uh, output up to 60,000 rows. So the previous restriction on the site was 30,000. Um, and now with the additional speeds and size uh, that we've done, you can export 60,000 rows in pretty quick time. So let's leave everything uh, as default and we're gonna just export the 2020 data. Now this will exceed 60,000. So when I click submit here, this will start generating the output. Um, and what happens when it exceeds the 60,000 previously, it would um, try and load the output and it would give you a message saying that it exceeded the maximum and you would have to then refine your search. What happens now, as you can see it's already loaded, is that you get this message saying it's produced an excess of 60,000 records, but it's also shown you the first 60,000. Now, when I say the first 60,000, these are ordered by track first. So alphabetically by track is the first criteria, then by date, uh, and then by time, um, and then finally by, um, by SP favorite rank. So what we've got in the output here um, will be horses alphabetic, uh, sorry, horse tracks, race tracks alphabetically um, sorted. So wherever your 60,000 cuts off, um, you'll be able to find that point 
probably by doing, you can either do an export to Excel, or if I select the track here, this will sort these 60,000 uh, by track, and you'll be able to see up to what point uh, it, it, uh, it outputted to. So you can see that the, uh, the last track was NACE, so you can see that's, that's how far it got, so basically halfway through the alphabet. Um, but it's giving you a 60,000 anyway. That's exportable to Excel. Now, the reason it's been capped at 60,000 is that some users are still using older versions of Excel, uh, where the maximum row count in Excel in those versions is 64,000. So if we increase this any further, one, it would probably put too much strain on your PC um, and, and potentially on the server as well. Uh, and two, some users wouldn't, it would crash their Excel. They physically wouldn't be able to export that to Excel. So we've capped it at 60,000, which is double the previous output. And the speed of up, obtaining that data set to screen into Excel is, is up to 10 times quicker. So really useful um, additional function we've applied there.